Hey, 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 Digging Deeper family. I think I'm going to make that my tagline. I was looking back at some of the Digging Deepers, and I think I just, every time it was a hey, 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 so we're going to go with that. Digging Deeper family, hello. Tim here, your host. I have a lot of power to my left and to my right. I have uh, Doug Higuera, our counseling pastor here at River Valley. Doug, how you doing? Doing well. Oh, doing well. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. Tim. Yeah. He's yeah. so powerful. I, he doesn't <laughs> need a mic. Yeah, I need one. And then our timeless, ageless uh, children's ministry pastor. That's a good compliment is what I was going for. Oh, Chuck, okay. Thank you. you. I, I am well. <laughs> I'm probably looking uh, more aged these days with my uh, full beard here. But your soul is oh so young. I am a vibrant. kid at heart. There's no doubt about it, Tim. Which is why the job is perfect. The for November you. no shave is over. Oh, Chuck. that's right. It's <laughs> not November yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Now it's Doug. just no shave January, I guess, or yeah. a too lazy January. But. Chuck has been here longer than a lot of us, and I have a theory that you'll be here well beyond a lot of us as well. So. Wow. It's a theory, you know, working Living on it. That's because we're going to get yeah. raptured out, right, Tim? Yeah. yeah just <laughs> so before we get Thanks, started, Doug. we have a really cool new series that we're going to dig into, but I just got to ask a really convicting question. One, New Year's resolutions, do you do them? And then two, are you still keeping your New Year's resolution? Uh, never do them. Okay. Uh, just... Try to carry on. If I have something that I'm dealing with, uh, may, my wife will tell me. So usually um, those things get taken care of without New Year's resolutions. So, so you're one I of those appreciate just, my wife. Uh, yes. healthy all the time kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much. I'm a right. pretty healthy that's, guy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Doug, what about you? Well, we, we do a word for the year. And uh, actually, uh, my word for the year came out of John 20, 21, <laughs> uh, which is... Uh, uh, Jesus said, um, my peace be with you. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And uh, so my word for the year is sent. Ah, uh-huh. nice. I thought you were going to say your word for the year is peace, and I was going to ask where you were last year with that <laughs> one, Doug. But <laughs> yeah, that one didn't go Sent. Too. That's really sent. cool. Yep. Well, awesome. So we just kind of finished up our, our Advent series, which is always really cool to go around Christmas. But now uh, we are going through a series to you listeners called values kicked it off this last week values and so if you're unfamiliar with kind of the structure of our church basically what has happened over the past several months our leadership team has come together with nine core values that fit into our our motto our our uh what am i trying to say our mission statement of connect grow go right connect jesus connect with others grow and then go be sent as as doug has said so these values fall into those categories and we went over a lot of drafts. I think it was yes, we did. not giraffes, but drafts, <laughs> about 15 of them, uh, just which we want you to know we've really been praying over these and slaving and sweating over them. And um, so these just aren't flippant statements. We no. decided that these nine things really define what we want to do as a church. Um, so that's where we're going to be at for the next nine weeks. So we're not necessarily going to have a chunk of passage like we did with Romans, uh, but we have these mission statements that obviously are rooted in Scripture. And we're going to dig into them. And I might have to say we're starting with probably one of my favorite ones, right? And that is connect to thrive. Um, so uh, the tagline to this is we connected, we connect people to Jesus and each other through life groups, authentic relationships, and growth because lives depend on it. And that's going to come up in another question here. But uh, first off, a lively debate that was happening. This is where I'm going to, I'm going to stop flapping my gums. And it's not, not a big debate. Our team was wondering, do we make this point, connect to thrive or connect or die? So some of you guys might be kind of thinking about that. And I'm going to kind of send it to Doug first, and then Chuck's definitely going to get some words in on this. But which phrase, Doug, do you think best represents our heart as a church on the importance of connection and why? I was leaning, I, I actually voted for Connect to Thrive when, when we had uh, the final draft, uh, but I also could go the other way because in you know 42 years of Christian service and ministry, um, one of the things that I have, have uh, witnessed that has broken my heart has been uh, what has happened to people who, who did not connect and uh, watching some people who who seem to be so vibrant and so uh, willing to contribute uh, and able, uh, and then they they isolated themselves 
uh, for one reason or another. Maybe they were hurt feelings, um, you know, didn't get the pat on the back they were looking for or something wasn't working. And, uh, and I don't even know if they're still walking with the Lord. Wow. And so in that case, the connect or die, I would say, um, I, I would say lean there, but, but what would you add in there, Chuck? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I did like the thrive just even as you think someone coming in the door. I think there needs to be a certain uh, biblical understanding when you say connect or die, if you're new <laughs> in walking in a church and seeing that motto on the wall, where are they going to shoot me? If yeah, I don't there's connect? a lot of pressure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where if you see connect to thrive, oh, okay, let me think of some synonyms there. You know, success, flourish, die, okay, croak, succumb. You know, right. uh, there's going to be some question marks. So I, I just think it's easier uh, for someone that doesn't have the biblical, maybe background a little bit of what we mean that they understand hey i do need to connect not only with the lord i need to connect with other people uh relationships uh those kinds of things so but i'm with you doug either either one works i just yeah. think the other one's a little bit more um sensitive yeah, oh, yeah. But one one other thought on that too is um the uh you know, when we first come to the Lord, and we'll probably cover a little bit of that more when, as we work through these questions, but um, when we first come to the Lord, you know, we, a lot of people come out of a world that where they've been, they've been hurt mm -hmm. and, and they're, uh, they're wounded. And so they, there's this fear of letting people get too close. Yes. And yet here is this uh, the, the place that's supposed to be safe. And I'm not saying, you know, you're going to, you're going to, be transparent and honest in a church service, but the the group, the small setting, the opportunities that we try to provide for people really become vital in you know in the opportunity to become vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, to because that really mm -hmm. is you know love demands vulnerability, yes. and uh, and so anyway, however, I feel like if somebody refuses to do that when you know every opportunity is presented that they probably will not thrive no, spiritually won't. and may even die yeah and so uh from where and just to recount uh connect or die could have gone either way connect to thrive could have gone either way i think i'm i'm kind of firmly in the camp of connect to thrive for a few reasons i totally understand i'm kind of with you i think if you have a better understanding of kind of um scripture you could sit there and talk about connect or die, but it's very intimidating. Um, I I work with youth primarily, so I'm used to somebody kind of hearing something and saying, "Oh yeah, watch watch me prove you wrong." Yeah. So I would almost wonder if somebody would say connect or die is kind of a challenge of like, "I'll show you I can di stay disconnected." But um, so that's kind of where I was at. And also, just thrive seems positive, and uh, and I was just talking to Pastor Dan, our, our church at home pastor. For those of you that are watching church at home. And he made a good point. Uh, connect or die could allow somebody to just be like, I'm connected. Cool. There's my fire insurance. Mm. Like um, the opposite of die was connect. I have connected. I don't need to do any more or less. Where thrive just seems like it has no ceiling, right? Thrive just seems like mm -hmm. you can keep growing and there is there is no end. Um, you could radiate. You could radiate. Correct. Yeah. And uh Connect, yeah, just positive. Thrive is positive. Connect seems a little negative, maybe intimidating. Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not ready to commit to not dying. Like, it just, I don't know, mm -hmm. could bring a lot. But one thing, and uh, you might have already mentioned this a little bit, Doug. So, um, at the end of kind of the tagline of the Connect to Thrive, uh, it says, "Because lives depend on it," and uh, or that seems like it would support the Connect or Die, and, and I agree with it. I'm kind of curious, maybe a a few sentences from the both of you, like unpack that a little bit for somebody that's kind of curious as to why do lives depend? Why do our spiritual lives depend on connection? Oh my goodness. The, the list could be endless, but I think it goes back in my, I'd go back to the original design. Uh, you know, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. Uh, this came from Larry Crabb, but uh, he, he said, uh, you know, why did God make man? You know, and, uh, you know, was he lonely? Obviously not. He, they, you know, they had a, clearly had a relationship going already. But it's almost like he was saying, let's let others in on the fun. Hmm. 
you know, and wow. so the the original design is you know, the, our lives depending on it is when we do what we were originally designed to do, you know, I, I mean, and Jesus narrowed it down when he said, yeah, two greatest commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, love your neighbor as yourself. So I'd say that, you know, he knows that out of that, um, our true personalities can emerge, you know, who, who we are, um, we can, you know, if we connect with people of similar values and pursuits, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's designed to thrive. This is where a, a life can take off. Yeah. And we get to see it happen on a regular basis. Yeah, and I think another word in there is others, you know, de- uh, lives depend on it. It's not just your life. <clears throat> it's the lives that you interact with. Uh, and I know in our life group, uh, someone will share a trial they're going through and then someone will get, yeah, I, I've, I've been there, I, I've done that, and let me give you some empathy from my point of view. Um, and so when uh, we are connecting, and I think it's the most important word, whether you think connect or thrive, connect or die, the most important word there is connecting. Wow, yeah, good word. And, and so uh, the body of Christ is designed that we are here for each other. Uh, Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And so as we serve each other, as we become transparent, as we share our trials, we identify with other people, people identify with us, and uh, we get to build each other up in that process and thrive together. Which is why so something like life groups will be a thing in this church as long as our doors are open and as long as we are still here. Life groups, I think, just represent that so so well, and especially life groups, bringing people to connect and relate to each other. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, that huge misunderstanding that I'm going to church. No, you're going to a building, a campus, we are the church. Yeah. When we get together, we then uh, encourage and edify one another. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Chuck, I'm going to keep it in your court. And uh, I think obviously one of the best examples that we could ever, ever learn from is is Jesus. And so I want to know, because um, I think all of these values, one thing is that they will all be displayed in Jesus's ministry and in his life. So how did you see this, kind of connect or die? How did you see this played out in Jesus's life? And then Kind of a second question, you can answer this. Um, did Jesus value connecting um, to God and connecting with others in his ministry equally, or was there a difference? So I can I can rephrase that question after the first one, because <laughs> it it, it's one of those that's going to be a real easy answer, or maybe there's some to unpack. But first, how did we see this in Jesus' life? Well, I, I think I'll kind of answer the both of them at the same time. Uh, you know, in his life, we see Jesus' relationship with the Father— we see his relationship with the disciples. We see the relationship he had with the masses. And then we see his time alone by himself. Uh, so um, when I think of um, unpacking that a little bit, I, I go to John chapter 5, and uh, he, uh, his relationship with the Father, I think Doug already said it when he just opened that, you know, Jesus did what he saw the Father doing. Um, and so in John chapter 5, uh, Jesus is saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it's something he sees the Father doing. So uh, Jesus uh, works as the Father works. He's dependent on him. Uh, then it says, For the Father loves the Son. So, uh, you know, Jesus knows the Father loves him. Uh, Jesus and the Father work together, verses 26, 27. For just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave the Son also to have life. He gave him the authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of man. He gives him authority, um, gives him responsibility. And then verse 30, he says, I can do nothing on my own initiative, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the Father's will. And as he worked with the disciples, we see that same pattern uh, of how he related to the Father as he relates to his disciples. As he loved them, they know he loved them. As their work was um, the Father's work, and uh, they were working to accomplish the Father's will, um, 
you know, you know, Jesus gave the disciples responsibility, gave them authority. Uh, all these things that we see happening uh, with his father, we see with the disciples as well. Um, and then, of course, the time he spent uh, with his father, with the disciples, were different than with the masses, how he interacted with them, um, his time alone, certainly to recharge, uh, sometimes to grieve, you know, think of there when his cousin was beheaded, John was beheaded, what did he do? He went away by himself. Um, so lots of different uh, aspects of Jesus' life, but it's mainly how he relates with the Father, he relates with the disciples, mm -hmm. and then in sharing with the masses, he communicates that truth, um, the love, and also confronting uh, those that were off base, uh, religious um, uh, authority there so just a real variety and as you think of um, you know what maybe Jesus daily tasks were well you know he probably get up in the morning and brush his teeth because uh, he was a human mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, also gotta have that deodorant <laughs> yes he did uh, and it and it looked a lot like our life and sometimes we put Jesus in a category certainly want to as God, but we forget that he's all man. And I think that's an important aspect of his ministry that he interacted like we would interact. And he wanted us to interact like he interacted with the father. Yeah. 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 I think that's a really good point before we kind of get uh, some of Doug's thoughts. So in our youth ministry, I'm going to be teaching on next week that, that passage in Mark about, um, so John, John the Baptist had just been beheaded and he's going to retreat, but then the masses and the crowd, they mm -hmm. come find him and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking on that part and he, like the, the, the human side of Jesus where like, he probably was tired. He was emotionally drained and, and we don't like, cause I'm talking about his compassion. And so even out of that tired, energetic, uh, out of that tiredness, probably emotionally drained, seeing Jesus' compassion. So it's funny that you you bring that up. But very good word, Chuck. Doug, do you have anything to add on to that? Uh, I think we see Jesus model um, the way he connected with others. Uh, in Luke 10, when he sent out the 70, uh, uh, some versions say 72, uh, but uh, he had influence over the 70, he invested in the 12, and he was intimate with the three. So, you know, his, his way, he wasn't trying to be everybody's best friend. Uh, he, you know, the, like what Tim just said, he was, he was very human, and uh, he um, had the, the three guys that he would bring with him, you know, like, like on the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, he didn't bring all of them up there. Right. And, uh, you know, some of the others could have been, you know, maybe could have been bothered by that. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there he invested in the 12, and the goal was, you know, to have them ready. But there were three because of that need for that close connection. Um, he had three that he could maybe be a little bit more uh, vulnerable with. Um, and I think there's a, there's a good model for us there. You know, we can't be everybody's best friends. We can't have <laughs> right. 18 besties, you know, I used we, to believe that <laughs> when I was nine, but <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, yeah, having a few people in your life that, that know you, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. that's that little number there, that three is, is not a bad thing to, to aim for where you've got a group, you can be transparent and mm -hmm. humble and yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, the idea of community, connecting to community, that's one of the biggest things. And I think, I think there's other uh, values where I would maybe unpack that more uh, down the road talking about community. But community is a game changer. That's the, the, the reason why I think my wife and I are, are the way we are is just because of that community and how important that is. And really finding mm -hmm. those, those intimate ones yeah. um, and realizing, like, this is my tribe and then this is, you know, the... This label is whatever you want in. yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. so well, one, one thing before you move on uh is the prayer in john 17 you know that we that they may be one as, as we yeah. are one you know and just that that is you know that can probably fit in any of these questions but just how important it was you know to connect connect yeah. connect here's another thinker that has nothing to do with anything when jesus <laughs> goes to talk to god is he alone or not 
<laughs> Get it? Because it's three and one. <laughs> Boom. Deep theological question for oh, you. Wow. Remember oh. my email, digging deeper at rivervalleycc.org. Uh, yeah. Was Jesus alone when he talked to God? Did Adam have That's, a belly button? Yeah. Yeah. I, who was running the world while Jesus was dying on the cross? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been asked those things, you know. And, right, and which... Like, hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a <laughs> rabbit trail and a half. Uh, we are about digging deeper, but we're not about digging rabbit trails. All right, so, thank you, Tim. Um, <clears throat> normally, I'm one to go right into that. So, uh, Doug, going to throw a question your way, and I think this is um, it's a good question to process, and I think it's a very relevant question after the year that we uh, have endured or gone through, and you know, with church, just uh, the, the physical church building. At some point, almost on a week to week basis, are we going to have it? Or are we not? So, the question I want to send your way is can you be a Christian and not go to church? Uh, so, you know, why, why is it important to connect to God and to connect to others? Um, and then, uh, actually, I want to get your answer first from that, and then uh, Chuck's as well. But can you be a Christian and not go to church? Uh, um, I, I've if somebody has a group of three or four people that they're meeting with, I would say, okay, that that's fine. That's, yeah, I think that's define good. church. Yeah, first. Oh, right. So, okay, yeah. Right. So maybe, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah. If if they're they got a, a small group Bible study, you know, I I first you know gave my life to the Lord in in June of 1980 out of a out of a small group, uh, a bunch of my coworkers, and um, and I just continued to look at that as that as my church until the group disbanded and the leader said, you know, it's probably ought to find something close to home, you know, and I was like, you know, but I like this, you know, I, I know all these people and <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I safe. didn't want to go somewhere. It's safe. <laughs> um, so or, anyway, you're going to ask. No, no, it's all you. All right. So um, uh, when I, when I hear somebody tell me that they're a Christian, but they don't go to church because of all the hypocrisy, you know, trust me, I get it. Uh, most of the wounds inflicted upon me in my, my 42 years of, of service have been inflicted by sheep. Uh, the, the old line is sheep bite. And, uh, so, you know, so, so I get it, you know, and Chuck, you probably have your share of stories as well. Wounds, yeah. A few wounds. And um, so, but I, I'm surrounded by far more people who, who are doing right and who are passionate about the Lord and who are who are, um, you know, pursuing him and just amazingly, you know, out there for the kingdom. So uh, obviously that hasn't kept me from, you know, being a part of it. Uh, but um, I would just say it is something my old pastor used to say. If you can't find a church you like, find the one you hate the least and go there. Yeah. Uh, because of, of some of the things Mark said in his message, you know, talking mm -hmm. about, you know, w in something you mentioned, you know, if you are not there, you're, there's a, there's a, somebody's not doing a job, you know, as each one does its part, mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 16. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, it's, we're part of a body. And so to just be able to go and be, you know, quit being so concerned about yourself you know interesting uh, definition of sin is is to turn inward you know where it becomes all about my thoughts my feelings my wants and to to go to church and go lord what it, what do you got for me here mm -hmm. who needs who mm -hmm. needs a word who you know you know where do i fit here you know could even be a, a valid question so yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and I think you also think of the difference between r Christian uh, relationships and religion of going to church. Mm. So when you say church, one side of it you might think, okay, I'm just going to go because I can say my checklist is off. I attended church, um, and maybe it's more a just a religious event that you do because you've always done it, where. Um, being a Christian and going to church, you have a purpose in it, and your purpose isn't about yourself. Your purpose is that you're going, number one, to worship God. Number two, as Doug already said, to act and interact with those that are there. Uh, Mark's message, I like this. He says, the bottom line, 
we're all better when someone is watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I said yeah. exclamation point, right? Well, it doesn't matter who's who's watching or who can watch you and say, hey, you know, Doug, I, I noticed this about you when you interact with people or in your... In, uh, as you get to know people, they're going to hopefully truth with you in love. And that's how we grow. That's how we become more like Jesus. That's how we help each other. Right. But it's probably not going to happen on a Sunday it probably morning. Isn't. No. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be in the, the smaller community yes. groups, you know, that that's, that's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, the part where you, you're going to become known and you're going to know others as a result of being a part of this. That is your church, really, mm-hmm. is your small group. Like they say, uh, you know, we're going to discipline. Discipline happens in the church. Well, what does that mean? Do you bring a, a person up in front of the, the 300 people that attend here? No, you bring that person up in front of their church, those that have a relationship with them, those that know them, those that have a heart connection with yeah. them. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. And, and I totally agree with everything you guys say. Very wise stuff. I think for me, I also, I have a lot of caution. Um, okay, how do I? Yeah. So I think a church would be a community where you have um, growth, accountability, and uh, you and others are are being spiritually fed. Right here, here in the word, obviously. I definitely don't think it's just the Sunday thing. But I, um, in my like past, you see others that settle. So like, um, I don't go to church, but I have this. Now the community group, the life group, those are great. Um, but what I've seen is people not wanting, and you know, I think of, uh, accountability. I think of, you know, having somebody maybe lovingly call you on something that scares a lot of people. So they say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. And it's, it's a comfortable group. It's a, we are going to do things that make us comfortable and we're not necessarily going to push the, push the bar anymore. Um, now that's a, I think that's a human flaw, a human error mm-hmm. that we all could fall into where, um, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I have a church and we meet and we talk about the Bible, go to that group and you're sitting there, you have a few beers and you, <laughs> you say, God bless you. And that's you getting in the like, Bible. And I'm not saying that's every group, but I think my, <laughs> I'm cautious to, to say like, just settle with a group and community. And for some that's huge and that's big and it's thriving and you are having great discussions but does that make sense my my concern with um like i don't think yeah if you don't go to sunday church i don't think that knocks you off the christian wagon at all but i would love for some sort of uh corporate family worship to be a goal in every christian's life personally sure when i think of i mean i love my life group and i know they love me but i want to go to church on sunday morning Because the corporate worship, when the body of Christ comes together and we are here together with a purpose of worshiping God, there is the spirit that moves through that is way different than the spirit that moves through my life group in me playing a guitar and leading some praise hymns with them. And it brings me to a different place in my relationship with God during that time of worship uh, through singing, worship through giving worship through the word it's a, it's a whole different atmosphere and a whole different connection i have at that time with the lord yeah yeah and it goes back to what you said you, i uh, have to versus want to mm-hmm. and that's the difference between church and religious church i think is what you said yes and i i honestly think that if you are in a a life group and that's kind of where you were introduced to church i think there's going to be growth and there's going to be thriving to where there's probably sure. going to be a desire on your heart to to have more, to, to be mm-hmm. a part of um, more. Mm-hmm. So I don't think either are wrong. Both can be used very unhealthily, though, as, mm-hmm. as much as we've seen um, going to a Sunday morning church, checks off a box. Mm-hmm. Um, Key word in the Christian life, balance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Balance. Balance, mm-hmm. definitely. So, um, well, yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, real quick, maybe uh, one word, one sentence answer from the both of you, because... Uh, maybe summarizing something you've said, what do you think is the biggest thing in a Christian life that's missing from somebody that doesn't have community? One word? Uh, I'll give you a sentence. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, salvation. (laughs) Next question. No. Uh, uh, All right, I got it. Yeah, sorry. That was kind of... I I threw that one on you guys. That's not fair, Tim. Um, So... 
the, I mean, so much. I mean, God, God is determined. He, he said in Philippians 1.6, uh, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Well, he, he uses a lot of people to chip away, mm -hmm. you know, to conform us uh, to the image of Christ. And so, um, yeah, without that, you could, you know, really slow down the process of, of growth. Uh, and, um, you know, I, again, I get it. Um, you know, be, be, uh, Matthew 24, 12 says, uh, because of the increase in wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. And so, you know, we're kind of watching that, you know, happen a, a bit in our community, you know, mm -hmm. where people are being almost encouraged to be isolated. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, it just, it slows down the growth. Um, but there's also one last thing. It was a, it was a guy came in, uh, uh Oh, six months ago or so, very passionate about uh, feeding the poor in our community. And, and uh, but when I asked him, I said, uh, so, you know, what service do you? Oh, man, I don't go to church. I, I, just, I just, yeah, the church does nothing for me. And, da, da, da. and he, you know, went off and clearly he was, and I thought, well, all right, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe we'll touch on that when we meet. And, um, and so, but I saw this guy, he's just out there by himself, you know, trying to find volunteers, trying to find funding, trying to find some support, you know, for what he's doing. And I'm going, you know, it's like, you can't find a church you like. Find the one you hate the least. And go there. Find somebody that's going <laughs> to, you know, perhaps, you know, be as passionate about what you're doing as you are. Mm -hmm. But, wow. Yeah, kind of missing. I'm going to plagiarize here. Uh, Mark's notes power of connection is some decisions are too difficult to figure out alone some problems are too hard to bear alone some tations are too strong to resist alone yes. yeah. uh, loneliness doesn't work we're not when Doug's already mentioned go back to the beginning of creation uh, we weren't designed that way and so no. when you are this angry or uh, this person that's looking for help yet you're not being willing to be part of a community it's like you need to think that through. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, kind of maybe summing up what you guys said, relationship. I think you're, you're missing that, obviously, if you're not uh, connecting to it, which kind of uh, naturally sends us into our last kind of question or thought that we were talking about. And Chuck, I'm going to throw this one your way. And why? And this might be kind of a weird, like, is there really an answer to it? But why did God make personal relationships such an intricate part of Christianity, of the Christian life. I mean, you just said uh, loneliness doesn't work, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, again, this might just be like, a, well, that's, that's the question's the answer. Like, relationships are really important for growth. But why would you say God made them so important in the Christian life? And then, yeah, so I'm going to throw that one to you, and then I got another one. But In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 26, he says, let us make man in our image and likeness so the likest image and so what is that likest image that god said let us make man in our likeness in our image well uh, you have the godhead itself living eternally as the father the son and the spirit in relationship and he knows that it is the best thing for us to be like him. <laughs> and certainly the, one of the most important aspects of that being like him is being relational, like he is relational. And he has perfect relations with those three friends, if you want to call them that. Uh, when Doug already said, hey, you know, get the three friends and bring them around you, right? Um, and he just knows it's the best thing for us. That's why he wants it for us. That's why he created it for us. And he created us in his image and likeness, which is already a plurality. And so uh, it, it, it begins there for sure. Okay. <clears throat> What's well, interesting, the, the word for righteousness actually is a relational term. And it's, uh, you know, it's basically all things flourishing as God has designed them to be. First of all, starting with, being reconciled to our Father, mm. uh, but then you know, learning how to to love others, and God wants us to do that uh, in the midst of of 
uh, adversity. I mean, we've got a devil that would would take us down if if God mm-hmm. allowed him to. We've got um, a world that is hostile to your faith. You've got a flesh that's hostile to your faith. And so, you know, this is the environment God wants us to thrive in Absolutely. and take a risk and step out of our comfort zone. And this mm-hmm. is where, you know, we we resist because you know, I just don't want to be hurt again. You know, I get it. But the thing is, is you know, less of you, more of him. Mm-hmm. Um, but just what I mean, having witnessed people who were so resistant, barely could walk through the door of a church and then watching and seeing what happened when they connected with others. It's just, it's just one of the, the simple pleasures of ministry and going, yep, yes, this is a there's a reason this is a core value. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we need this. Yeah. Um, and there in the creation account, the only thing that wasn't good was what? Man was alone. Man was alone. It's not good. Right. Man, this is why I have you guys here. So much so much wisdom uh, just to pull from. So kind of the last part of the question to you, although this kind of maybe goes into our, I don't know if this goes into our keep digging segment, but uh, what's the most important thing that uh, a church can, or what's the most vital way, I think, a church can connect with its community? And you could even say whether it's its church community or it's the community that it's in. What do you think is one of the most vital ways that... Uh, yeah, church can do that. Well, in the community, I know we've had several messages on this, but basically it's bloom where you're planted. Um, that we are the church, whether we're collecting garbage, whether we're healing someone as working on healing someone as a nurse, uh, electrician, wherever you are, uh, you are a representative of the Lord. And the way you reach your community is encourage your church to bloom where they're planted, that they yes. have that responsibility. They are in the community. The community doesn't say, hey, I think we all want to go to church on Sunday. The church needs to come to them and see, uh, you know, why are you so different? Mm-hmm. You know, you you don't seem to get angry when these things happen. What What is it about you? Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. Or, wow, uh, a friend uh, worked in a refractories plant uh and uh, as a mechanic, and this guy, he just didn't like me. I don't know why, um, but one day after work, I was leaving work. He had a flat tire. He didn't have a jack. I said, let me, let me help you with my jack. So I jacked up his car, helped him change his tire. My goodness, the guy was my best friend wow. after that. It doesn't take much to love people or come alongside people. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's just having that perspective of knowing, hey, uh, I have an opportunity. Yeah. Wow. That's a good word. And I'm sorry I didn't like you before. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. It wasn't me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Doug, to well, you? Well, kind of along the lines of what, what Chuck just said there, you know, for uh, uh, for about 15 years, I was uh, Special Agent Doug Higuera, cleverly disguised as a Sears auto mechanic, <laughs> but, all, but all the while serving, you know, the Lord. And, and it, so, yeah, the, the church <laughs> being brought into the community mm-hmm. was was one way. But I, I think uh, this last year, it was interesting. I'm in a, a small group with a bunch of uh, area pastors, and uh, they were going, wow. You know, as they, as they were dealing with not being able to meet with their folks, they were saying, man, you guys are way ahead of us on this. We, we should have been more intentional about the connecting people in life groups because now they're scrambling. You know, we got over 4,000 people on our database and so without the life groups, that would have, it would have crushed us mm. to try to f- make contact with, yes. with all those people and how crucial then the life group leaders became at that time to check in with the folks and, mm-hmm. you know, and just how are folks doing and, and alert us when we needed to be, you know, on the job. But I think the, uh, uh, the specialty life groups, the, um, uh, the support groups that we have, grief share, uh, uh, cancer, pain, um, just the groups like that give people an opportunity mm-hmm. uh, to connect. And, yeah, and, totally. Uh, I think that. And we have some happens. here in the body that are actually involved in our government in Salem, here in our community. Um, certainly prayer is always an important part for you as a church connecting with your community. How can we connect? Um, getting to know your community um, we have a lifeline where our community comes to us for poor, for help. I mean, how many times does Jesus one, yeah. talk about the poor and the widow? 
um, coming alongside them, praying with them. Maybe it isn't even financial help they come here for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I walk through our lobby and there's prayer going on almost every time I go oh, through. So. The ultimate s- serving warrior, Harriet Harris. And yes. Our, our whole Lifeline yeah. team, actually. Jim, all of them. But yeah. yes, she does it all, whether it's help you with any of that or just the prayer. Um, I've seen her out just underneath cars for hours. It's, that Lifeline ministry is huge. Did it I is, cut you off, Chuck? Or? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I won't be <laughs> You'll recover. <laughs> That's it. He's you not going to this church. You did. He's not going to go to this <laughs> church anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You kind of said earlier, specialty life groups, uh, I think, are huge for us because uh, those specialty life groups are, you know, obviously they have a specialty and a focus on one thing. And you might be sitting there thinking, I'm the only person that struggles with this or the doubt. So all of a sudden there's this this specialty <clears throat> life group and there's a dozen of you and you once thought you were alone. And so talk about just bringing people to connect. I think that's. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Well, we're almost out of time, guys. So I want to keep digging with you. I want to keep digging. What is a resource? Uh that uh, whether I'm going to say connecting with God or connecting with others or people, um, or actually more, no, yeah, connection, um, that you guys would suggest, whether it's a podcast, a book, sermon series. First of all, I think we're, we want to groove. Doug and I would understand the word groove with you better than, than connect. But, uh, um, uh, you want to groove? With, okay. Yeah, it's groovy, man. Anyway. <clears throat> so... Um, so <laughs> Groove to thrive. I don't think All that, right. yeah. that doesn't yeah. have a... Let's get in the groove to thrive. Yeah, yeah. man. So, yeah, a resource. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, Life Together. Um, powerful little book that just presents um, fellowship in a way that is largely foreign uh, to our American culture. Okay, so it's um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Life Together. Life Together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if um, I, I I don't know as it would be a book that I would recommend. It would certainly be that if you aren't in a life group, uh, that you would need to get in one, uh, whether you're here at River Valley or you're at another church. Uh, you need that time where those relationships are developed to the point where you can be transparent, uh, where you can uh, be a source for others as well as we think of the gifts of the spirit. Yes. So um, get connected. There it is. Get connected. Yeah. yeah. Well, gentlemen, that's all we have for today. Mm-hmm. Listeners, thank you so much. I'm going to encourage you to keep, thank you. Yeah, keep uh, tuning in with us next week. I have a, a, a I'm not going to tell you who, but a first time, hopefully not the last time, member of our staff that will be joining us uh, next week. So, gentlemen, thank you. We'll see you again here soon. See you guys later. Catch you next week.